No, orcs are funny, orcs are fun, and orcs are strong. And because of those things, orcs tend to be one of the most popular form of playing kill team in the entire game. So if you're someone that's brand new to kill team and want to learn how to play orcs, by the end of this video, you're going to know everything about the team and exactly how to play them so you can feel comfortable going out and spending the $50, $60 to buy and build and paint this kill team. All right, so when we look at the commando kill team, we're going to have one commando knob, which is going to be your leader. Then we're going to get nine other operatives. We're going to choose to build two commando boys. We're going to choose a slasher, a breacher, a sniper, a daca boy, a comms boy, a burner boy, and a rocket boy. We are going to not use the bomb squig and the grot. Let's just focus on getting really good with these models. And then at some point in the future, you guys can use those models once you become more acclimated with the game something we have to keep in mind over here is this ability for all of our orcs called throat slitters that says this operative can perform a charge action while it has a conceal order so in other words generally that would be against the rules you would need to be in an engage order which means your opponents can shoot at you while you're behind cover throat slitters says that if your model is behind cover you're essentially allowed to still charge and act as if you're in an engage order, which gives your team a pretty unfair advantage in fighting sometimes. Now, because orcs generally do a ton of melee damage, we need to make sure that we do everything we can to move our orcs as quickly up the field as possible. Under the equipment tab, we're gonna make sure that every one of our orcs is equipped with a climbing rope. Climbing rope essentially just allows us to pass through terrain at a much faster rate than what our opponents are able to do, which allows us to get slingshot across the board. The first model we're going to be going over is the Commando Boy. The Commando Boy has a slugger and he has a chopper. Notice that the choppers are four attacks doing four and five damage a piece. Guys, that is no joke. Also keep in mind that these models can use an ability called Justice Scratch, like what you see above over there, which basically says if your opponent hits you, you can spend one CP to ignore the damage that hit them. I am telling you guys, remember that you have this move over here. This is one of the most powerful things about this entire kill team and just orcs in general. And I'm telling you when you properly use this in the right time, it is absolutely devastating to the morale of your opponent for you to just be like, oh, well that crit was, it was just a scratch. It didn't do anything. These commando boys, we're gonna be running up the board to contest objectives in a conceal order. They should always be behind cover and conceal so that your opponents can't shoot at them, but you still have the ability to charge your opponents when you get in range. Next model we have here is the Slasher Boy. Slasher Boy is basically the same exact way you're gonna play the other commando boys. The Slasher Boy is the same exact thing. The only thing that's different is that he can do mortal wounds at times, depending on the situation. And then also he can re-roll hits when he attacks. The Breacher Boy is the next model that we're just gonna be running up the board preferably to terrain so that you can punch holes through terrain although terrain is not that much of a problem because our, our models are going to have the uh, rope equipped but just keep in mind that the breacher boy can punch holes through terrain so that your units can move through much easier now the sniper boy is definitely not a model that you guys want to be running up the board Keep in mind that the sniper boy has a sniper, okay? Which is kind of intense because this shoots six times. You're gonna roll six dice and it lands on threes. So you're gonna have a pretty good chance to, look, to land some hits and any crits, okay? Do mortal wounds, which is unblockable damage. Keep in mind that you're generally gonna wanna place this model up top so that climbing rope that he has you're going to be able to get to a place where you have vantage pretty well and place him on a spot where you can see the majority of the board if that means you take him and place him extremely far away from the rest of your team just on some random spot put him there make sure he can see the entire board because he has an ability called the best spot yeah you see you got to find the right spot perform a free shoot action with this operative using its scoped big shooter even if it has a conceal order so not in other words nothing can shoot at it and it can shoot at everything 
The next model we have here is the Commando Daca Boy. Keep in mind that if you're within six inches of a model that you're shooting at, you get to re-roll any or all of your attack dice, which incentivizes that you move this model up the board. However, I would suggest that you keep this model back and put him on vantage so he can shoot early in the game. And then later on in the game, you can move him forward to contest objectives and take advantage of that ability. Keep in mind that there's a video on this channel where we go over movement. So I would definitely suggest that you watch the movement video because it's gonna make everything you do when you play Kill Team much more efficient. This model also has an ability called Daka Dash, which allows you to perform a free shoot and free dash action. So you get to move and then you call Daka Dash and then you can dash and shoot, which is incredibly powerful. This model right here is incredibly fun and it looks awesome. Next model we're gonna go over is the Rocket Boy. The Rocket Boy has a rocket launcher. This has the AP1 special rule, so it removes one of your opponent's defense dice and it does four and five damage, which is nothing to scoff at, guys. That's a lot of damage. You wanna make sure that your Rocket Boy is shooting at your opponent's models that have really good saves and that you just really need to delete off of the board. That's the purpose of the Rocket Boy. Keep him behind cover so that he stays safe, preferably up on top somewhere where he has vantage and can see the entire board. Next model we have here is the Burna Boy. Guys, the Burna Boy is the flamer, you know? Personally, I think that when we have flamers, I like to use flamers defensively. I would hold flamers back so that I can just light anything up that gets too close to my side of the field, depending on the situation inside the game. However, you can totally just run him up with the rest of the orcs that you have. I just think depending on the situation, the burn is usually like a really good late game play where burn is hit on two. So it kind of guarantees damage. And towards the end of the game, your opponent's models tend to have wounds on them. And when they have a low amount of wounds and you can guarantee, you know, two damage here, and two damage there from a burner, you and you can hit multiple models at one time. I've had big turns where I could take out just like two or three models in one activation with the burn up because they had a low amount of health. So I would hold the burner back and not be so aggressive with him because he could be a game winning. You can either just choose to run him with the board. He can be like anything else or he can win you the game at the end of the game. It's up to you. Now, the last two models we're gonna go over, we're gonna go over in tandem because we have the Commando Comms Boy. And then we also have the Commando Knob. The Knob actually being our leader. Keep in mind that our Commando Knob has 13 wounds, guys. This is a big dude, okay? He has two activation points. And the reason why I brought up the Comms Boy or the Commsman before is because he has an ability called Listen In, which allows him to add one to the APL of any model that you have, which essentially for your Commando knob makes his APL two, which is you essentially get to dash and then charge across the entire board and then do melee damage. And when you're doing melee damage with a big choppa where you're landing five and six damage a piece, hitting on twos, Guys, you are more than likely just gonna eviscerate. Like I've had games where I would run, because I did that, I could run the knob from one side of the battlefield to almost the other side of the battlefield completely and just run across. I'm just imagining my mind like a giant orc running across the battlefield and just slamming his ax into something and removing it from the game. And the look on your opponent's face when that happens is devastating. So I would always keep the commando knob and the commsmen kind of together like a team so that in the case when you need to do that or you can do that you can do that you know and and it rocks people the comms boy is doing damage on ones he has this rear weird weapon like you really don't want to be using this model for anything other than that if you really wanted to you can go ahead and equip him with a choppa for two equipment points, which is gonna mean you're gonna lose off some, climb, some climbing ropes over here. But if you equip if you equip that comms boy with a choppa, suddenly he becomes like a melee threat, which is what I think is, it could make him just a little bit stronger, you know? But generally, you don't wanna be fighting with him, you just want him to help everyone else. 
As for the strategic ploys, the ones that you want to keep in mind are daka daka daka, which is usually something that you're going to call in the beginning of the game. As long as you can line up good shots, I would spend CP on that. Otherwise, I would just be free from spending my CP on that. And then later on in the game, when your orcs have moved up and you're about to start dealing melee damage, you're going to want to call a wah. When you call a wah, two normal hits, you then get to take one of your normal hits and then turn it into a critical hit which in the right situation can just blast your opponent's models. All right, guys, and that's going to be it for the Commando or Kill Team. If you have any questions, you can leave those questions in the comment section below. If you want to check out any other Kill Team guides, I have plenty of guides on this channel so that you can watch and learn as much as you want. Also, remember to hit the bell icon because I do go live on this channel every now and then, and it'll notify you when I'm live, and you can just talk to me straight up, and we can just chill and paint models. All right, everybody, always remember, eat healthy, okay work out every single day most importantly you guys got to remember to believe in yourself all right peace out people